Indulge in the seductive flavors of a classic tiramisu, where every luscious bite takes you on a journey of delectable pleasure. Imagine layers of delicate lady fingers soaked in rich espresso, each one melting in your mouth with a heavenly combination of mascarpone cheese and whipped cream. The decadent cocoa powder dusted on top is the perfect finish to this elegant dessert, leaving you craving more. Now let's watch this master chef make it. Starting with the coffee. A mocha pot, also known as a stove top espresso maker, uses steam pressure to brew coffee by passing hot water through ground coffee beans. The process of using a mocha pot to make coffee for tiramisu is similar to making regular coffee, but there are a few key differences. First, the coffee used for tiramisu needs to be strong and concentrated, which means using a finer grind of coffee beans and packing the coffee more tightly into the filter basket of the mocha pot. This helps to extract more flavor and caffeine from the beans, resulting in a more robust coffee. Second, the coffee used for tiramisu should be cooled before using it in the recipe. This helps to prevent the lady fingers from becoming too soggy when they absorb the coffee, and it also helps to preserve the flavor of the coffee in the finished dish. Here he adds a little rum to the coffee. Next, he adds room temp mascarpone cheese and rum to a bowl and gives it a little mix. Now for the sabayon. A sabayon is a classic Italian dessert sauce that is made by whisking together egg yolks, sugar, and a sweet wine such as marsala until the mixture becomes light, fluffy, and ribbony. The resulting sauce is sweet, silky, and perfect for a variety of desserts, including tiramisu. To make a sabayon for tiramisu, you'll need the following ingredients. Six egg yolks, one and a quarter cups of granulated sugar. In a large heat-proof bowl, whisk together the egg yolks and sugar until the mixture becomes pale and creamy. Place the bowl over a pot of simmering water making sure that the bottom of the bowl doesn't touch the water. Continue to whisk the egg yolk mixture vigorously until it becomes light, fluffy, and ribbony. Remove the bowl from the heat and continue to whisk the mixture until it cools to room temperature. Next add the sabayon to the mascarpone and rum mixture and give it a good mix. Next he makes the whipped cream. Whipping cream is a process of incorporating air into cream to create a light and fluffy texture. This is achieved by beating the cream at high speeds which causes the fat globules in the cream to break down and surround the air bubbles, creating a foam-like structure. The key to successfully whipping cream is to use cold cream and a cold bowl and whisk. This helps to keep the fat in the cream solid, which makes it easier to incorporate air and form stable peaks. Here he adds the sabayon to the whipped cream. Folding whipped cream into sabayon can be a tricky process, but it is an important step in creating a light and airy dessert. The goal of this process is to combine the two mixtures without deflating the whipped cream, as the air bubbles are what give the mixture its fluffy texture. One of the key things to keep in mind when folding whipped cream into sabayon is to take your time and be gentle. Use a spatula to carefully fold the whipped cream into the sabayon mixture, being sure to scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl to fully incorporate all of the ingredients. It's important to fold gently to avoid over-mixing the two mixtures, which could result in a loss of volume and texture. Now it's time to build this dessert. Take a lady finger and dip it quickly into the coffee, 
making sure to coat both sides evenly. Don't let the lady finger sit in the coffee for too long, as it will become too soggy and fall apart. Place the soaked lady finger into a dish or container, layering them in a single layer. Repeat this process with the remaining lady fingers until you have enough for your recipe. Next, watch how he masterfully layers the mascarpone mixture on top of the lady fingers. Repeat the process one more time. Finally, he gives a nice dusting of cocoa powder over the top. After 24 hours in the fridge, it's time to cut and serve. Please smash that like button and subscribe for more videos. Let us know what you would like to see next in the comments. This recipe will be down below in the description.